So this session it will be taken by Burmanyam. Uh, he's uh, from a uh, company in Hyderabad, and they uh, do the 3D printing jobs there. Okay, and uh, let me before start of his uh, lecture, can, uh, let me introduce him to you. Uh, Subramanyam has uh, worked as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics, uh, shaping the careers of uh, students personnel who are interested about uh, practical electronics. His teaching methodology is uh, more of infotainment and helping students to apply concepts in real time. His aim is to educate students about uh, future technology. He had hands-off experience on 100 plus uh, real-time projects. His domain includes robotics, IoT, 3D printing manufacturing. He is helping hardware startups to prototype models rapidly with uh, 3D printing. He is also a cornetic classical uh, singer and artist. He is currently working on his uh, startup on robotics. Uh, Subramanyam is an uh, inventor and electronics engineer by profession. He is co-founder and CTO in uh, Quentin Technosoft TechSoft Private Limited, it's a product development company, and uh, designed fully automatic cooking robot called the uh, Sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. I'm sorry uh, for Indian uh, uh, cousins. Uh, his um, uh, inventions include the product uh, Niravel, which is a smart water automation tool with uh, IoT technology. So I hope with his um, um, uh, presentation, you will definitely know what exactly the advancements in uh, 3D printing are going on now. Now I request uh, uh, Subramanyangar to start his uh, speech. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jaikaran Reddigaru, for the nice introduction. So, uh, so but the thing is, you know, uh, your uh, the 3D printing whole day for today. I think it's a 3D printing day for you all. Uh, so, I, I'd like to, you know, quickly touch uh, what 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 is 3D printing uh, in brief, and we'll uh, you know move to advancements in 3D printing. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, the thing is, you know. Uh, but the first question is uh, why do we require 3D printing and uh, what do we do? You know, I just want to make it as an interactive and interactive session instead of uh, uh, you know one person talking from this side. Of us. Uh, it's very interactive. We'll, I'll, I'll be sharing some of the. Uh, I know because uh, we are into startup field. Uh, which have very you know specific requirements challenge printing we have uh, done extensive research on materials also so uh, i'd like to make it as an interactive session please be Uh, so the, the so-called new technology called L2 manufacturing or 3D printing. Uh, uh, but the question here is it's. Uh, uh, Not new. Uh, the printing is not new here. Uh, it's been around the world, you know, since 1980s. But why we are talking it as a new technical part like this? Uh, we do require physical parts for the different, different applications. Uh, for example, I need it for a specific application like product. For example, I want to make some product, uh, which is, uh, say, some art products. I, I cannot give it as a printed circuit board uh, as a PC. So I want to have a more to it. So for that, it's extensive process and time consuming and also costly uh, because I need to get molds, designs. Uh, uh, 
uh, they are very specific to different kinds of materials uh, it takes two months of time and then you need to invest on uh, moldings and the if you your local services will purchase it from you know local vendors then only you'll get committed every every step there is an additional addition of costs now this this is going to increase time and also uh, not affect you what happens if you reduce these steps this step and this step yeah can we do that that's with the 3d printing it's called additive manufacturing techniques i think you have a good session uh, you know uh, just now about uh, what are the basic uh, 3d printing techniques on uh, starting from basics to uh, you know what are its problems and so and so tropic all that stuff i would not be mentioning all that again because you have uh, you know get good knowledge uh, from the previous sessions so uh if you see what is the scope of uh, 3d printing it's one of a uh, you know fourth industrial revolution concepts uh you know and biggest of all the fourth industrial yeah sorry for that so uh, we are talking about uh, advancements in uh, 3d printing so advanced technologies comes in different different scenarios like advanced Advancements in uh, technology part. How are we making uh, different kinds of materials? Positions, uh, sheet lamination, all the stuff that comes with the you know manufacturing techniques. and some of the things are some of the advancements comes in the metal sciences for example there are exact metal composites metal composites you know filaments with uh, you know uh, carbon fiber uh, their composite uh, this comes under uh, advanced materials and there is one more uh, advancements in 3d printing it's called application application oriented because these technology point of view so starting from this you know one of uh, the middle is uh, field ready so uh, this is the company called field ready they usually one uh, you know make uh, 3d printing specific to uh, particular application because uh, take uh, one of the disastrous places or uh, you know uh, just far away from city on the mountains uh, there is a uh, application for for example there is a pipe connection water line connection Uh, there is a big pipe and there is small pipe uh, somehow because of the disaster the pipe got uh, you know broke so there is no time for uh, you know such situations one person will go and get the orders from amazon or uh, you know getting getting stones strings from other place what they'll do is they'll bring this uh, 3d printers to that place they'll simply you know print what are the required they'll design it and print for the particular application that's it so for that the requirement is we need faster kind of uh, you know metal printing and also it should be metal should be you know uh, plastics or uh, uh, which are uh, you know uh, resist to uh, material and also uh, they should be cost effective one the, uh, the uh, form factor of the printing also should be uh, very less then only it can be done so these application can be done with the fdm called uh, fusion deposit model or ff Uh, fused filament fabrication techniques so uh, the, this is the reason why you know people uh, use fdm techniques because of its material availability and rapid prototyping uh, capabilities so this is how people touch uh, lives with the 3d printing application so one more uh, application is same uh, uh, ff technology of fdm technologies uh, 
people have made uh, PPE materials or masks, you know, face shields with, uh, you know, 3D printing stuff. We have uh, done many, uh, you know, face shields of, uh, in the COVID uh, time. Uh, you know, take some uh, sheet of uh, metal and we uh, doctors want to have uh, uh, a stick to the head. They have uh, immediately done uh, uh, many 3D printed parts and we have uh, supplied that. One more advancement in the 3D printing is uh, people have started making organs. Why do we need uh, organs? Because uh, why do we need uh, application? problem in the organ transplantation is they just reject the outer body part as a foreign part. Whereas if you have seen uh, the stem cell therapy or whatever the coming up uh, technologies, uh, body, your body will not reject your own parts. So, people have developed some of the organs with the stem cells. Still, one of the gallbladders with a uh, own stem. To early simplifies. Uh, materials, biomaterials, uh, so that so that we can happily you know take the te technological advancements of FDM instead of you you are inputting the uh, plastic part or uh, any filaments, we are injecting uh, biograde uh, materials or tissues. Uh, so it's a, a different kind of application with the uh, same technology, FTM technology. Whereas coming to implants, uh, it's uh, it's the application very different. Uh, people have used uh, uh, you know a fusion metal fusions, uh, metal fusions with the powder grade. Not to you know simply replace the skull, and that's not possible. But if you take any other kind of materials so, or uh, you know steel uh, uh, any kind of medical grade steels it's very difficult to manufacture that shape it's always tough even time taking process you know because lives matter in the medical field so instead of that people will simply scan the skull and replace that part with the 3d printed uh, uh, implants they're actually doing it you know, one of the application of uh, this kind of uh, middle pills and materials. And uh, recently I have uh, seen, a, you know, uh, a paper on uh, 3D printing, how it's going to use in forensic sciences. Forensic, you know, uh, if there is a any instance of, uh, uh, you know, murder or any accidents, people will come and scan for evidences. So how, how are you going to uh, use 3D printing in forensic science? For example, there is a bite, you know, uh, teeth bite for a uh, for a human being, uh, same. So they're going to scan uh, the bite part uh, with a 3D cameras and they'll be, you know, uh, compare for the comparison for the victims on uh, uh, other person who are the murderer. They'll be printing this T and they'll, they'll be comparing all that stuff, for example, like this. So for, for, from that perspective, to the the they're going to uh, you know submit proofs for the courts and they're actually doing it. 
but here uh, the 3d printed part is spherical but the shadow if you see it's a square it's a you know uh, beautiful way of explaining things to the students or uh, if you want to project some architecture we can happily uh, you know print models with the 3d printing Excuse me, sir. I think share is not being slided. Share, share is not, slide is not being seen. Oh, no. No, sir. I share again. Uh, could you please tell me where did you miss? Uh, we have seen. Uh, yeah, that 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 foreign six foreign six months. Yeah, you yeah. you missed this one, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so this is one of the education uh, application I'm talking, here. and uh, uh, you know, very recently, last month, uh, we have tried. Like this, uh, you know, people are talking about, uh, you know. Uh, support materials, uh, you know, uh, what are the hips material or all that stuff. You can actually actually solve that. I'll be sharing the links to it. You can actually, you know, try hands on with your college, uh, you know, if you have any 3D printing facilities or you can come to us, we'll show you uh, how we can have hands on with different kind of technologies. And one more thing is see, clear. How can we print clear metals like glass? Uh, people have uh, used, uh, uh, you know, PET G metals, glycol modified uh, PET. Uh, you know what we use for uh, water bottles and all that stuff. Uh, people have, you know, have been using PET for a long time, but uh, whereas coming to this very clear glass appearance, we have to know what are the parameters and what what are the tweaks we need uh, to make. But why do we need uh, uh, to uh, to print you know transparent like metals because of its ablations because of its strength. For example, uh, you have seen that if you print something on a 3D print, uh, they are prone to you know breakages because of its any sort of because it's printing layer by layer. If you apply some force in some direction, if there is a weak point, uh, it will just break. What is the problem there? Uh, because of you know. Uh, the bonding between layer to layer. If you reduce the gap between layers and you know improve the bonding, the mineral strength will increase like anything, right? So here we are actually doing that. Uh, if you uh, if you seen any print like PET G, PET G, glycol modified PET, uh, we will see like uh, some of the cloudy kind of stuff. Whereas if you see this. Uh, print we have uh, done with a different, uh, you know, different uh, extra, uh, you know, extrusion, extrusion settings with the same material. Its strength is 10 to 15 times more than the. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Yes. Your slides are not visible, sir. And the quality of audio is not up to the mark. Eh? Okay. Sorry. Uh, Internet I'll uh, I'll do one thing. I'll just uh, switch off the video and uh, is is it okay now? Yeah, it's better, sir. Better. Yeah. Otherwise, just a few minutes. I'll just connect to another uh, like minute. Yeah. So I'm talking about uh, uh, you know advancements. You know. Uh, making the same metals available with the same technology. How can we print, uh, you know, more stronger parts with the same metal available? Uh, so this is one of the application. Uh, uh, how can we print, uh, you know, very high strength metals with the 3D prints? And then uh, another application is aerospace. Uh, but why do we need required uh, aerospace metals? You know, people have. Different, different, different uh, applications in the aerospace. We, you know, uh, we need in the aerospace. We have to use nylon. We have to use uh, uh, fusion materials. We have to use metals and all. Uh, 
for a specific aircraft so it's not you know we have still talked about you know only 3d printing is for uh, prototyping and all the stuff but it's not real people have really really using it for the production real great production also for the real time and that's the advancement being done with the 3d printing technology uh, one of the application is automotive uh, why do you need uh, uh, 3d printing in automotive means for example take an example of race car uh, for the race car weight of the vehicle is very important is less than just one kg or two kg it says make lot of sense in terms of speed uh, in terms of its fuel efficiency engine efficiency so people have designed special parts uh, only for uh, those applications uh, i can actually show some of the videos because uh, but uh, you know because of uh, wide uh, bandwidth problems i cannot uh, share right now but i'll be sharing through group you can actually see those interesting videos uh one of the design is uh, fashion designing uh, i'll be showing in the real time how, how can we do uh, you know design design parts i'll be sharing my uh, video also now uh, see so this is the part printed with the you know direct fdm printer without any supports without any joints series so we have uh, done this you know we can have uh, uh, you know any fashion designable parts uh, this is done with the normal fdm uh, i think it's been 5 years we did it 5 uh, years back with the fdm technology uh, without using any joints or any supports any you know it's a pre assembled part Uh, and one more thing i'd like to share is uh, one of the application uh, see uh, this is uh, a 3d printed art uh, mr azaro used uh, 3d printing for the creating wave form for example sound is a wave right so has done a 3d uh, 3d modified form of sound wave it's actually a wave right so has done 3d modeling for that he has printed it's like a beautiful sculpture uh, and we, uh, with the same uh, application uh, uh, we have used uh, 3d printing to print a wave this is sound wave see this this is a sound wave uh, and also would like to show you how we can track back the sound wave when the you know real uh, time thing for example i have recorded a audio and then uh, from the audio waveform i have uh, uh, created uh, a 3d print modified uh, i'll show you just a second so it's going to uh, read that waveform back uh, and will tell you what is uh, what is the exact uh, pattern in that see that so it, it can actually work on uh, not not just a printing technology what are its uh, you know extends of applications where in which we can use and make a difference in the people lives that is one of the application uh, we did for uh, you know sound wave and one more thing is printed electronics uh, so there are the special kind of metals available which are conductive yes uh, 3d printing parts can also be conductive because of its you know exotic uh, filaments availability uh, so uh, we can actually take take fdm technology so they are conductive filament instead of you keeping pla or abs material we will just add uh, conductive materials 
uh, we have uh, different circuits in electronics, right? Or uh, take a you know plastic part and happily print uh, ICs, you know uh, IC tracks. You just place the IC and solder it, uh, and then again uh, have a nice layout. So it's basically a waterproof and also conductive material inside. So you can actually work on that. For example, take a drone application. Uh, so you want to have motors inside with wiring and all that stuff, right? Instead of wiring, remove all the wirings, place a motor. The conductivity path can also be printed with the 3D printer. So you can actually uh, try to uh, make it 3D printable drone, one of its uh, application. Uh, if you see same electronics area, uh, people used to have uh, uh, you know antennas, uh, guided wave form, you know wave guides. Uh, these waveguides are used uh, to transmit high range of signals, like in gigahertz or uh, you know, megahertz, whatever the frequency it is. Uh, but the problem with the waveguides is manufacturing of these waveguides is very tough. And also, we need uh, metal plating, sometimes gold or silver plating is required. Uh, for that, if you, if you need uh, uh, research parts, like if you want to increase its efficiency and we want to try it with different shapes and structures. Uh, we cannot go with the traditional metals on test. Instead of that, people try to use not even metal. You just made a plastic part and go for uh, what are the nickel plating or after that metal plating or gold plating is required. That's one of the application. And also, uh, people have uh, started researching on uh, uh, you know uh, nanoscale uh, uh, technologies. Uh, wherein which we can have very tiny robots uh, which can go inside our body and make uh, uh, you know uh, diseases cure and also light sculptures whatnot there, there are many many applications uh, involved in food food is one of the uh, application for example uh, why do we need uh, food for example nasa has uh, uh, you know done uh, you know researching on food uh, uh, astronauts want to have uh, you know, homemade food that uh, spice also. So th what they have done is, uh, in order to increase the shelf life, it, it should not have water content, right? So they heat dry, uh, you know, dehydrate the food and spend, uh, you know, send it to space. After that, they have to add water. Whatever the shape they want, they can happily blend it and eat. Uh, it has not only uh, touched uh, every application, it also touched the computer science also. Uh, for example, uh, 3D printing have its own problems of uh, you know uh, time taking, time consumption process. Of course, it's faster than traditional manufacturing process. But if you compare, uh, uh, you know, uh, unit economics of unit time material, uh, one pa one part can be printed with two hours, and again, if you want to print another part, it's again two hours of time. So, but uh, the university University of Michigan has. Uh, done extensive research on you know uh, making these algorithms very fast you just increase the speed if you, if you increase the speed in the normal 3d printer you know see the see the top side uh, image so if you just increase the speed in the normal uh, 3d printer you will not get exact print there it's a failure print actually but if you increase with the just an update of the software in the in up, update of the firmware uh, just you know, it's open source. You can actually download the Michigan University updated firmware for your 3D printer, and you know you, you can increase the speed like anything from you know uh, uh, 20, 30 mm per second to 150 mm, you know 160 mm per second, without any altering of the quality of the print. That's how uh, they have achieved uh, uh, speed in the 3D printer. Actually. Uh, try with any any of your uh, FDM 3D printers in you know, college or in you know research laboratory. Uh, uh, you know uh, Reebok has uh, stopped making molds for uh, specific applications. If you want to have your own footprint kind of uh, shoes, uh, you can actually 3D print them. Uh, Gecko grippers, grippers is one of the beautiful application uh, for the particular use. Uh, you can actually 3D print. Uh, we need not to go for uh, you know expensive traditional manufacturings. Uh, Geodropy is uh, you know we have done for the temple application. We actually did a 3D print for the uh, mold part. Uh, you know uh, what not? You know people have started making constructions with the same technology, but instead of uh, using small 3D printers for the future film application uh, for the plastic things. People have modified it for the cement or uh, 
you know building construction materials uh, with a bigger size and shape uh, nasa wants to build colonies uh, by taking 3d printers to the mars uh, that's application uh, 3d printing application not only and here we have actually moved to 4d printing yes 4d uh, if you see 3d printing is a three dimensional is a physical part right so i just want to you know a few responses from your side what is uh, 4d printing what do you think uh, 4d printing uh, can do to us why do you need uh, 4d printing would you have any idea on that if anybody can you know share your views I i'll talk to more things on that hello you guys are there okay any idea on 4d printing anyone uh, we are not exactly sure but uh, let me guess uh, it's just a, it just like a uh, process just like as a 3d printing but uh, it can transform to the another structure yeah. by, by applying some uh, temperature or anything like that to correct correct so i just want to quickly share the 4d printing screen My screen is visible. Yes. 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 So, uh, what Radhikaru said is very right, appropriate. So, we are adding one more dimensions. So, what is that one more dimensions? It's a transformation. Transformation is one more dimension. Why do we need that? For example, take this. You know, simple drawing. Uh, I think videos cannot be played. Otherwise, I can have uh, show the videos also. So it's a one day simple line, two days you know simple sheet of paper, three days you know box or uh, any length with height of kind of stuff. Whereas 4D, you know it can actually transform one form to another form. For example, I can happily print a sheet of paper, and I can actually transform into the cube or whatever the shape I need at at what of the time I need. For example, if you want to. in the same box what is the time required do you need to have you know uh, all the uh, uh, supports inside for the uh, you know flat surface for the top ceiling these are all not required so you can happily print a sheet and ask wherever the you know required bends are there you can actually program it program in the sense not uh, computer science programming it's a material program you can actually program the material of uh, wherever the wherever you required bends or any change in the shape and, uh, you know with a, with a different kinds of metal we need to print different kind of metal there and so it, it we have to subject to their specific uh, stimulus whether it is a uh, electronics uh, you know electrical or magnetic uh, heat or any kind of stuff it, it, it can change its shape uh, i'll try to show the video if you are able to see just tell me so mit has done this uh, uh, with a simple rope kind of stuff uh, so what are the inside metals between these two or uh, it's a memory uh, shape polymers memory polymers so uh, if you keep that in a water water is the stimulus here uh, otherwise it will just a string if you place in a water it will transform its shape A simple cube kind of structure. MIT has uh, done that, and a few of other universities also were doing the same thing. Uh, so, if you ask what exactly is the 4D printing, how how are they going to achieve it? So, you know, 3D printing, right? I'm just differentiating with a simple uh, screen, you know, simple uh, slide. So, 3D printing is uh, we have a 3D printer. Uh, you know, it's going to print different kinds like. Uh, you talk about FTM. There are different technologies. That's not matter. If you are giving material, you are giving, you are getting some kind of uh, structure, three-dimensional structure. It's a 3D printing. Now, whereas 4D printing, it's a combination of 3D printing with some kind of another input. We need smart materials. These are called, you know, memory polymers, shape memory polymers. Uh, one of the application you can see is a shape memory uh, stuff is nitinol. Uh, I think you have. Uh, you guys have heard about nitinol wire 
uh, you know microsoft also used for it for the some of the products so uh, netnol is one of the shape memory uh, you know material uh, whereas we are using shape memory polymers whereas we have to design 3d 3d printing uh, part like three dimensional how are you going, uh, going to get 3d part in the software we have to design that but it's a little bit weak wherever we need some shape uh, changing we need to apply these shape memory polymers in that area so you can actually program stimulus also because uh, uh, you know uh, stimulus is very related to the material you have used for example if you use any hydrophobic material or you know hydrophilic material so these can react with water right so here water is the stimulus here so you can choose some of the metals which can react with heat you can choose some of the metals which can react with electricity you can choose some of the metals you can which can react with electromagnetism all that stuff so for example if you uh, print that metal with the you know shape memory polymer and apply stimulus it can immediately change its shape that, that's what you have uh, uh, i have just showed you in the video so here the joint metals part is done with the uh, shape memory polymer so the stimulus is water here so i can actually program the shape uh, with the water stimulus and wherever water is you know coming to uh, apply as a stimulus is going to change the shape so what are its applications why do we need to change the shape we can actually print the, the same shape with the 3d print right the problem is if you want to you know if you want to have a different motion mechanism you want to have electricity you want to have you know some motion joints and we need to have some motors to move it all that stuff is required here you can just apply stimulus electrical stimulus like it's not need not to be water always you can have multiple kinds of applications like heat is one of the thing you just apply some heat it, it will change your shape you just turn off the heat it will come to its normal position and of course there are different applications which can uh, transform its shape permanently or temporarily there are two kinds of uh, applications are available uh, so this is one of the application uh, you know uh, used uh, i'll just show you the video so here the string you have seen you know uh, this guy is actually looking at a string uh, here it is a heater heater provided this string here is shape memory polymer if you want to pull this truck we, we need to use some uh, you know torque application with the motor and all but here we just need to turn on the heater that's it it's going to pull the truck in so and these shape memory polymers are like if you up, apply heat it will you know contract otherwise it, it will go to its elongation form elastic like how, how, how you're going to use rubbers you know ela you know uh, elastic rubbers so it will be that form but it, it when it's subjected to heat it will just contract so that it can pull the objects for example uh, take this so it's a gripper application uh, if you want to hold that so place a 4d printable uh, part there it's a, a special kind of uh, temporary uh, shaped polymer uh, if you apply heat it, it will start shrinking if you just uh, you know release the heat uh, it will come to its original form uh, the programming of when you when do you want uh, it to be contract it's, it's called programming so you can actually program at what temperature you need at what shape at, at what is the dimension you need you can actually select it's your own application so uh, I, I just want to show you last video of uh, here people are using it for food food industry is using for example take a lace chips example it's just an example you know to be particularly that application uh, so uh, for the food mit is extensively researching uh, uh, you know uh, for making shapes why do we need uh, uh, you know food to be 4d printed any idea any guesses do we require 4d technology uh, to change shapes in the food, different kinds of shapes for the food. See this video. So you can actually. Uh, 
uh, this is the material preparation. Whatever the shape you need, you can actually do that. You can see it's uh, catch its of hardness, springiness on fracture efficiencies, elasticity. So here one simple question is, why do we need uh, you know 4D printing technology in the food? Any guess? Sir, any guess? Uh, why do we need uh, 4D printing technology in the food? Maybe hacking can be. Uh... Sorry, can be the packing uh, the, the would be much better. No, like if, if, if you have uh, any one shape uh, food, uniform food, yeah, the packing may be easy. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, the most of the, for example, if you take any you know packaged food, most of the a money being wasted because of its transportation you know guess what 65 percent to 85 percent of the cost is you know spent towards the transportation or logistics because it's shape and all that side for example if you can arrange all the shape with the lesser space that 65 percent of the cost is being reduced and you also get the lesser price it actually affects the you know economy environment all that stuff because of that, you know, people are using it for the different kind of gelatin kind of uh, 4D printing materials. Uh, so, excellent research is being carried out by these kind of uh, institutes. One of the best initiatives in the world is MIT. You can actually uh, see its uh, MIT self-assembly lab in the Google. Uh, there, is, uh, there are many videos and research papers being published on, uh, you know, what kind of research is being going on with the material sciences and also with application sciences. Uh, Bap, uh, you have just she, you know, seen some muzzle kind of. Uh, I, I'll just show one, one of the video. See, this is the string muzzle uh, video of uh, you know image I've showed you. So he is just touching the uh, shape memory thing with the with his hand. It will immediately you know start shrinking, right? You can actually program to that minimum temperature. Of course, it depends on application and what temperature you need. What materials it, it needs, different different uh, uh, materials with a different application. Uh, previous application is for the heat, it's going to shrink. Here, uh, after applying the heat, it, it start uh, you know uh, coming to the original form. It's a two different applications. So now here he is using 122 for heat. He is just switching on the heater. See the energy it's exhibiting. Thanks for that. Uh, you know, uh, if you have any queries, uh, I'd like to take the queries.
Well, so this is uh, Dr. Jai Kiran, the coordinator. Uh, uh, excellent presentation, yes, sir. In, in fact, uh, most of the things we don't know that the 3D printing has went to this level. Thank you very much for that. And my first question is, uh, uh, what about the quality of the food? Uh, I mean, uh, when we are uh, looking for uh, the food, we definitely look at the quality as well as the hygiene of the right, right? And it is 3D printing the food. Can you compare it? How the nutrition things will be done? How exactly the print goes on in that? You know, for, for, for the printing, you're asking, uh, could uh, you please uh, come again? I, I cannot hear I'm, you. I'm, I'm asking about the 3D printing. So in 3D printing, you told about Hello. the food, right? We can even print the food. Yeah, yeah. And my question is about that. So, the uh, is, so coming to the quality, it's like... Yes, yes. Go, ahead, sir. go ahead, go ahead. Coming to the quality, you know, uh, we are actually using uh, these kind of technologies physically. For example, take uh, uh, what you call, uh, you know, tomato soup is there. You know, we have packaged soup here. So it's a, it's actually a dried form of material. We are just adding the heat, uh, heated water, or warm water to it. It will come to as a soup. In the same way, it's, it's the same process. We are not using any anything. Uh, which is so sophisticated we are just applying applying 3d printing technology for its uh, shape and form and what are the requirements is doing it automatically that's it uh, it's not much uh, you know on it's not 3d printing technology will not affect the quality or uh, any taste kind of preferences for the food yeah yeah thank you and um, uh... I am able to find one question in the chat box there. It is asked by Saurabh Dev. And he is asking that uh, how to increase okay. the quality of the base part of 3D printed material, same as the top part. Okay. So, uh, special, the specialty, the very good question actually. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the first thing for the 3D printing is we need to have, uh, you know, proper, if you are talking about FDM part. First, first layer is always different from the remaining portions because it has in contact with bed and it's also in contact with the nozzle. Uh, if you want to have very, very clear and shiny parts, we need to maintain exact uh, priming and also we need to maintain exact bed levels because I'm talking about FDM. Uh, so we need to maintain exact bed levels and also uh, bed position. Some calibration is needed. Uh, and also, it depends on what kind of materials are using. Uh, for example, if you are using, uh, F, uh, you know, uh, PLA part, uh, or making of the quality parts is not that tough. But if you have gone for uh, ABS or nylon, any other kind of abrasive materials, making it is very tough. So, in order to get that materials, because wrapping, you know, wrapping and all the, uh, you know, problems will come into picture. For that, we need to maintain exact temperatures for the bed also. And also, we need to have a closed environment. Uh, if you keep 3D printers in the uh, you know, AC room and want want, into, want it, uh, 3D prints to be, uh, happen at a good quality, it will not. So, we need to have a closed surface, you know, closed uh, environment with the, some of the heat displaced or increased temperatures. And uh, try to switch off the fans for the first layer. Uh, and also try to print with the uh, lower speed. This will, you know, immensely improve your quality uh, at the first layer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Excellent session, I think. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so it seems uh, no more questions, sir. Uh, I, yeah, thank I, you. I really thank you very much for your uh, giving such a wonderful um, uh, eye on the 3D printing technologies, and we have given very good things. In fact, we don't know how advanced the 3D printers went into. So thank you very much for all this, and uh, we should appreciate your efforts. Also, we have collected a lot of material for us. Thank you very much, sir, for this. Yeah. Thank. You. Thank you.